Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. So this week I want to talk a bit about how I keep track of my digital brain. For that I use Notion for most of the uh, processes. I use Todoist for my tasks and like the thoughts that I have more and more I'm starting to use Logseek and Obsidian. And Logseek and Obsidian work together. So in this video, I first wanna show you why I'm using these tools together and not just one or the other. How I made that work, because they're using the same backend. So anything I change in one end is updated in the other and vice versa. And why Markdown as a backend is so important if you wanna keep your notes for the long term. Finally, I'm going to talk about how to protect your data if you're using other tools. So there's going to be a couple of slides in the end about how to make backups with Notion and with Todoist. And if you don't want to check out all the Markdown stuff, there will be a table of contents so you can skip forward and have a look at those. Now, first of all, why am I using these tools together? Now, I could go into a nitty gritty thing about all the changes between them, but that will make a very long video. The main reason why I'm keeping both of them around is that Obsidian is much better if I want to write some long form documents like scripts or any notes that I made during a presentation or training. And Logseek has the benefit as it's using a block based approach. And that means that if I want to refer to a lot of notes that I made and want to combine them into one page, Logseek just makes it much easier to read. Now, if you also want to use Logseek and Obsidian together, there's a few settings that you need to know. You need to tell Obsidian to work in the same way as Logseek does, and that means that they work together beautifully. So in Obsidian, I go to settings and then files and links, and there is a set that says default location for new notes, where I say in the folder specified below, and I pick pages, which is the default location in Logseek. Another thing that I did is that I installed the community plugin called the daily notes. And in daily notes, I said that the date format is year, month, day, which is the same as Logseek and to put them in journals, which is where Logseek puts them. Now there are more settings and I'll put a link to a forum post from someone who did like a full detail on it in the description. And you should be able to get like 90% of the functionality out of these two settings. At least for me, it works wonderfully. Now, if you need something more in depth about using Logseek, Obsidian and them together, I highly recommend checking out the courses that my friend Santi is giving out. I'll put links to them in the description. Now, the reason why I can use both of these together is because they're using Markdown text files as a backend, meaning that Logseek talks to my local hard drive and Obsidian talks to the same folder on my local hard drive. Now I expanded on that a bit because I'm also using Git to sync those notes back to the internet and then use it on the other side to access those notes using the Logseek web browser on my mobile phone or on my laptop where I have exactly the same setup. And that brings me to why something like Markdown is important. Markdown is just a way of formatting text files. And the reason that's important is text files can be read by anything. So it not only works in Obsidian and Logseek, but it also works in Vim, which is a nearly ancient editor and Notepad, which is a default in Windows. And I'm not talking a little bit of ancient. Vim has been around for Ever. We are saying that, well, let's see, it was released in 1988. That's eternity in computer times. Markdown itself was developed in 2004 and is a way of formatting text files and putting information in there. So this has been allowed long and that mainly means that if I'm using text files, I can still read and write text files. Well, I can't, but most people will be able to still read and write my notes way after I'm gone. And that means that I'm never having to worry about my notes being inaccessible in the future. So what about that other program I'm always talking about, Notion? Well, Notion has an export function, so you can get the markdown and CSV files out of it. But what if Notion gets an, well, untimely demise and just suddenly becomes inaccessible? That's when you have a problem because you can't access your notes. So it's important if you're using any type of service to have some kind of plan to make backups. You wanna be able to get to your notes and not lose too much if for whatever reason they are inaccessible or maybe just stop having your account. I mean, somebody could make a mistake and you couldn't log into your Google account, Notion, Todoist, whatever. 
so make backups. Now for the markdown things, it's pretty simple. As long as you put those text files somewhere like Dropbox or OneDrive, Google Drive, iCloud, whatever, it will be copied to multiple systems and you'll have your backups. I personally use Git for it because I like the open standard and I like the way that I can automate this and have all the versions, but that might be too technical for some people. You can, however, get the GitHub desktop client. And I wanted to mention last week i made one about reverting you can use the desktop client to easily go back a version at least it's less technical than using the command line personally i'll use the command line because i'm just more familiar with it and i just work quicker on it but i'm sure not everybody wants to do that now when we're talking backups for todoist however you need to manually take some action in todoist you go to your settings and then to backups and todoist makes like a daily file so you can just click download get the file and you'll have a backup i would say make a recurring task in todoist say once a month that says download my tasks and put them somewhere maybe once a week depends a bit mm, todoist for me flows really quickly so i'm pretty sure if todoist would stop working i would just send mails to people saying like hey i lost my task list and send the requests anew but the backup for the recurring tasks is definitely important then we have notion and with notion you can just go to your main page and click export be sure to take your main page you need the top one because notion will export that page if you want your whole workspace you'll need to export it and make sure that sub pages are included and that you put content on everything meaning that it will also export your images and other attachments that you have inside notion this file will take a while to generate and it will be big but at least you'll have an off-site backup that you can access in case the worst happens i'm dropping things here now one of the benefits of having different systems means I don't have all my eggs in one basket. If I lose access to Todoist, I will still have most of my notes and I can probably work back from there what I wanted to get done. And that means that I can sleep well at night knowing that I wouldn't lose everything at the same day. Now don't look at these things and go like, they will never stop. If you use cloud services, you need to be sure. I even have frequent backups of my complete Google Apps infrastructure. Now, Google might never disappear, but have you tried calling them? If at some point, for whatever reason, my accounts get blocked or locked out, I have huge problems, not alone because I couldn't upload any more videos on my YouTube account, but other reasons as well. And that's why I keep backups. Not so much because I fear that the company will go away, but that somewhere a mistake will be made and my account will be closed and I might not be able to access this data for a month while I'm trying to figure out how to contact someone to restore my status. Thanks for watching. I put a little less effort in this video because I'm really busy, but I still wanted to get a video out to you guys. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.